the Honor Guard 9mm pistol from Honor Defense. Let's check it out. The number of people that are concealed carrying in the United States has grown over the past few years and is continuing to grow. And because of that, a lot of the gun manufacturers are designing guns to fit that niche. Something that is very comfortable and thin, uh, which makes it really nice for concealed carry holders, especially if you're carrying all day, uh, but also something that's a decent size to be able to enjoy when you take to the range. And if you ever need it for self-defense, uh, it's very shootable and manageable. And there are a number of different options out there and more to come. Uh, but this is a brand new pistol from 2000, the end of 2015. And this is the Honor Guard from Honor Defense. Gary Ramey, formerly of Beretta, uh, is heading the company. And then Adam Walker, who is an engineer, formerly from Remington, uh, came together and consulted a lot of law enforcement, military, uh, women shooter rights, trainers, uh, trying to come up with a pistol that took all the what was available so far and to really make a pistol that incorporated a lot of those different features. And so here we have the Honor Guard. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and make sure the gun isn't loaded. So we're going to drop the magazine, check the chamber, and it is unloaded. Uh, it does come with two steel magazines, a seven rounder and an eight rounder with an extended base plate. Now this is definitely reminiscent of, and to me, the first thing I thought about was the shield but obviously there's some departures from that and one of the big things is this grip uh, the texturing on this grip is just really exceptional and what i love about this grip it's grippy and but yet it's not abrasive so you're not getting a stipple you're getting more of a definite uh, square pattern that runs all the way up and then you can see right here the finger groove that comes through and then it goes all the way up over the trigger uh, this is really comfortable, especially when you're holding it and you're taking your uh, shooting finger and you can just rest it and it actually you feel the texture. Uh, then we have a, just a small line and then at the back it's a little uh, more large from the sides. And here at the front there's just one little notch uh, of a finger groove. It's just really a hint. But this was one of the first things that I noticed. Also, there is an extra back strap. This has the larger back strap on it, but you can replace it with a flat back strap, which again is another feature that's not typical on most of your small little single stack 9mm. Another big thing was the uh, serrations on the slide. And you have rear and front serrations, but it doesn't stop there. They go over the top. <laughs> and uh, it really brings all this together. Uh, and it's not sharp, but it's definitely grippy and grippy enough. Here at the front, very easy to bring back. Now the frame itself is a polymer. Uh, the slide is a stainless steel. It's actually a 416 stainless steel, and it has a nitro carburized uh, finish on it, which that's what H&K uses. I posted a picture on Instagram and Facebook, and there have been some comments about the large honor guard engraved into the slide. You know, that's a matter, matter of taste and personal preference. Uh, it does have Honor Defense right here, Gainesville, Georgia, and then on the other side, Honor Defense. Another advanced feature of this pistol is that it is fully ambidextrous. Uh, and here we have it on the right side. You can see we have a slide stop. We have a magazine release, even on the right side, and of course, obviously, on the left side. Uh, the magazines do pop out really fast, and uh, it is drop-free. 
Here we have a place for an optional safety. If you want a frame safety, of course, I didn't want the frame safety. And so we have plugs here and here. But if you want the frame safety, it is ambidextrous as well. Everything fits really close uh, to the frame. Now here we have our takedown lever, which is pretty large, but again, it really rides close to the frame as well. One really advanced feature is that the barrel is crowned and that really helps in case you damage the muzzle of your barrel uh, it's not going to nick right here in the rifling. The magazine release is metal, the trigger is also metal, uh, your sights are aluminum. Uh, and speaking of sights, we have a three dot sight, a two at the rear, and then here at the front we have a large orange dot so this gives you a really good contrast. Uh, also there's a small cocking shelf right here uh, in case you have a one-handed reload and you can cock it right here but then it's smooth on the top. The sights are also compatible with Glock 43 sights so there's a ton of different sight combinations on the market uh, if you want to change these sights out. Now the barrel is 3.2 inches in length on the compact model. Uh, they do make a little bit larger model that has a 3.8 inch barrel and it does have an accessory rail. One of the things they do too is they have this one model called the fist frame and the frame actually comes out about an inch and I'll have a picture right here for you to look at. If you're in a critical situation where you are actually touching someone, you're engaged, uh, if that slide is moved at all, there's no action with the trigger. And so with that little extension, it allows you to put the gun right up to the, you know, whoever's attacking you and you can pull the trigger and it will fire. It won't be out of battery. But now when you first look at this pistol, you think, shield. <laughs> At least I did. I mean, I thought that immediately. Uh, and as you can see, it's really exact. I mean, as far as the size, I mean, the trigger guard, uh, the length, the, the length here, the height. I mean, everything is really close. Now, that seems like that that would be what this is. It's just a shield clone. Uh, but I'm going to show you some things, other than the features that I've already shown that are really uh, advanced over what the shield has just on the outside. I mean, and that's the front slide serrations, the ambidextrous features, and, um, you know, the grip texturing. But the interior is completely different. And we're going to look at that when we break it down. The Honor Guard has a little higher bore axis. And if you'll look right here where you bring your hand, the web of your hand here, it does ride just a touch bigger or a touch taller. It's 6.2 inches in length, it's 4.6 inches in height, and it's just under an inch in width. Uh, but again, it's just about the same dimensions as your standard shield. Now the weight on the Honor Guard, 22.7 ounces. The weight on the shield, 20.2 ounces. Now, one question that I had was, do Smith & Wesson magazines work in the Honor Guard? Because they look really close. Uh, and unfortunately, they don't. Uh, if you'll notice, the catch here at the front is totally different uh, than the mag catch holes here. In fact, this won't even feed into the magazine well. But yet, the Smith & Wesson will, but it's loose and it doesn't catch. Now, of course, one question is, is are you going to be able to get holsters? What kind of aftermarket support on these pistols? I mean, the Glock and the Shield have been around for a while. One of the cool things about this pistol is that there are a number of companies that are making holsters uh, for the Honor Guard. Uh, DeSantis, Galco, Alien Gear, uh, Crossbreed, and others. You can go to their website and see the list of different companies. In fact, uh, Crimson Trace has a laser uh, for the Honor Guard. As far as magazines go, uh, they are only available right now on the Honor Defense website. They run about $35. Uh, so not too bad for the price of the magazine. But as this pistol grows, and again, this is not even a year old. Uh, and so it's a really new product, and yet it's already getting a lot of support in the industry. We're going to check the trigger pull. We're going to make sure the gun is unloaded. The magazine's been removed. So we have a little take up, a little stacking. And then a nice crisp snap. Uh, very solid. Reset. About right there. We're going to take our Lyman trigger gauge and check the trigger pull. Seven pounds. Seven pounds, 0.5 ounces. And that's pretty much what uh, the Honor Guard, our uh, Honor Defense claims, is about seven, seven and a half pounds. 
good for a self-defense trigger. So let's disassemble the pistol, remove the magazine, uh, bring back your slide all the way back. Now another thing that does differentiate the honor guard is that you don't have to pull the trigger for disassembly. Uh, now the shield does have a lever inside that you move, the Glock you have to pull the trigger. With this there's not a lever and you don't have to pull the trigger, which I think that's an advantage. Uh, now that we have the slide in the rear position, bring down your takedown lever, like so, and then release your slide stop and the slide assembly comes right off. Now here we have your dual recoil spring and uh, it is a metal guide rod. It is a little bit, there we go, it comes right out. It's not captured. And, uh, but one of the things about this guide rod is that it is 410 stainless and it has a PX5 finish, which is a very tough and durable finish. Uh, and then we have our barrel right here. And again, this is 416 stainless uh, and this has been nitro carburized. The finish on the inside is very well done. Uh, here we see the striker assembly right here. And um, this is really just a very finely finished piece. And to give you a comparison, here is the shield slide. And you can see that even though there are some similarities with the striker, there's definitely some differences uh, with the mechanism and the way it's set up. Here is the honor guard barrel, and here is the shield barrel. Recoil spring, recoil spring. The honor guard here at the top, and then we have the shield. I just really wanted to kind of show this. The locking block is a little bit different. Uh, here in the honor guard and definitely some differences back here uh, but one of the things that really differentiates the honor guard take your takedown lever bring it up just a little bit and then pull it out then take your locking block and the whole assembly comes out this is more in line with the SIG P uh, 320. It's a modular system. This is is the gun. What's really cool about this is that you can change this out to different frames. Now see the frame is completely, it's just polymer now. Uh, so we can take this module and put it in a different frame, uh, maybe even coming up with more calibers. You can change this out. And this is going to make it really easy, especially for guys that have a, you know, there's a lot of processes that go into purchasing a gun, especially the states that are not so free. Um, and this gives you a great option to be able to have different guns uh, with one little system. This is stainless steel. It's very well made, and obviously it's very modular. To reset it in, there are some hooks. Go to the back of the frame, set it into place. There's a little bit of work just to get this started, your takedown lever, and you just have to kind of fish it through. And there we go, it's in place. But that makes it really simple to clean, and again, the design here is an advancement over the Glock or the Smith & Wesson. This is more in line again with the SIG. For reassembly, just throw in your barrel. Uh, one of the things about the recoil spring is you want to make sure that the open areas are on the side. And this is just a little bit of a trick to get this in, especially behind the camera. There we go. It's in place. And then just return it to your slide. Hit your slide stop. Bring the lever back. You're ready to go. Another thing is there's no magazine disconnect on this pistol, which I love. Now one thing to note is that the slide stop is really recessed, uh, which will keep you from snagging it, but it's also difficult to get to if the slide is in the rear position, um, it, really getting a hold of that, it, it's, a very, it's pretty difficult. And, uh, but most trainers now are saying you need to do a, you know, a slingshot type thing using uh, your slide to feed. And that's really what I do. It's very rare that I actually hit uh, the slide release. As far as at the range, I shot about 150 rounds of uh, American Eagle and some SHT Full Metal Jacket Federal Premium defense loads. Um, not any hiccups, no bobbles, um, nothing. The only thing that I had any kind of issue with was sometimes the trigger reset. I didn't want to, I thought I had it reset because I've been shooting a really short reset trigger lately. And so it kind of threw me off a little bit. Once I got used to it though, it was fine. 
uh, but it is one thing you want to watch. We're going to load up some of these 124 grain SHT defense loads just to make sure the gun functions well. And these are from Federal Premium. And I want to thank Federal Premium for furnishing the SHT and the American Eagle. I was shooting this Federal SHT and the first thing that I shot was this target and every one of them was right here in this little hole. And I mean, I was shooting fairly rapidly. So um, this stuff is really easy to shoot. Great self-defense load, <laughs> very accurate. This is an excellent pistol for self-defense. It's very thin, very small, and uh, you know, it has a lot of great features that some of the other single stack 9mm that are on the market just don't have. I think it pulls them all together. And so, a uh, very ergonomic little pistol. Uh, pulling back the serrations on the slide were very well done. Uh, of course, the one thing is that slide release, you're going to have a hard time actuating the slide release because it's so recessed. And so, using those serrations, you're going to do a lot. Now the box is just a cardboard box, made in the USA, um, and we get all of our instructions and different things, a sticker. One of the things they do recommend is that you have a break-in period of 150 to 200 rounds. And um, of course the pistol is just a basic foam, not anything very special, which helps keep the price down. Uh, with a lot of these different extra features, which, you know, the uh, all the serration cuts, that adds to cost. This grip adds to cost, the modular system, uh, the ambidextrous controls, and so, and if you're like me, I don't usually keep my box, <laughs> I don't keep my pistol in my box. Um, it does come with a little small flag, uh, and it does come with a lock, which is typical. But one of the things I want to mention about this pistol since I had the lock out, the lock is made, uh, it is an imported piece. Uh, it's very difficult to find a reasonable gun lock that's made here in the U.S., but other than that, every part on the Honor Guard is made in the USA. Um, like all gun companies, there are companies that do produce uh, parts for these companies. But one of the things that Honor Guard is dead set on is that all of those companies have to produce the parts in the U.S. One thing, too, to note is this small little red case. Uh, it's painted red on the back so you don't reload it. But this is an overpressured round that was fired through the pistol. Uh, again, they are plus P rated, and so you can shoot you know, all your self-defense ammo through there. Now, one of the things about plus P, whether it's rated that way or not, is shooting a lot of plus P just adds extra wear and tear on your pistol. Uh, but you definitely need to train with what, you, what you're going to carry in your pistol. Honor Guard is owned and operated by veterans. Uh, they do all the work, that's who they hire. Uh, and again, all the parts are made in the U.S. And another thing about the commitment of Honor Guard is that they give proceeds to the uh, Navy SEAL Foundation and also the DEA Survivor Benefit Fund. And this helps families when you have an officer that has been killed in action. Uh, this helps the family. So these are two really great foundations uh, that you know Honor Guard supports, and I think that's really a testament to their stand, uh, not only for veterans but also for for America and the Second Amendment. And here on the box, if you can read this, think of veteran. But we also want to bring in the Glock 43, uh, and even though the silhouette is closer to the shield, uh, this is definitely a combatant in the. Uh, single stack 9mm market. Uh, one of the things about this, the uh, Glock is it only holds six rounds. Another thing about the Glock is typically, you know, they run between, you know, the 425 to 475 range. Um, the Smith & Wesson Shield can run anywhere from down to about 350, 375 to $400. Um, the Honor Guard is coming in retail price at 499 and we're seeing them about 450 down to about 400 uh, so it's going to be kind of an in-between between these two 
And a lot of you guys are saying, well, why would I want to buy something new that really doesn't have much of a reputation over these two that are very proven and popular designs? So what are the advantages of the Honor Guard? Uh, I think one of the big things is the modular uh, trigger system and the, uh, the modularity of the gun in itself. Uh, being able to accept different frames as they come available and uh, different configurations. Uh, one pistol and yet you can go with different configurations, especially for those states that have limited or extensive background checks and things like that. Um, the other thing is the slides, having the dual slide cuts here and here, uh, the sights being Glock sights, or you can interchange them with Glock sights. Uh, the really beautiful texturing. In fact, this is some of the best uh, texturing I've seen on a firearm, especially a concealed carry firearm, that you really need to be able to have a good grip on. Um, the trigger is nice and smooth. Uh, I'm sure there's some things that you can do uh, beyond that. Uh, the crown barrel. You know, there are just a lot of different features. The ambidextrous features here where you've got your your safeties if you want to go with that option, the slide release, the mag release, already on this pistol. Uh, I think I read somewhere where a guy, you know, said, you know, you can buy a standard pistol, a uh, shield or a Glock, and then spend, you know, $100 on it, upgrading it to an Apex trigger and, you know, different type stippling jobs here and there or getting slide cuts in the serrations in your uh, in your slide. But or you can go with something like this that's about the same price with a lot of really cool features. So check out the Honor Guard and put it next to your shield or your Glock and just feel the difference. Uh, check out the way they feel and they shoot. And I think you'll be surprised at how much this little pistol can really appeal to you. I'll tell you, I, I love it. And um, it's been a lot of fun to shoot. And so I'm looking for more. Uh, with this we're going to get more in depth with the shield comparison which i like to do and a lot of guys seem to like that as well and we'll probably bring in the glock 43 in there and and do some side-by-side -side shooting and things like that just to help you make a good decision on the pistol that you want to carry so the honor guard nine millimeter pistol from honor defense thumbs way up be strong be of good courage god bless america long live the republic You know, it's just okay. And to give you another, and to give you a little comparison, here's the honor guard. Here's the honor, honor. So the honor guard. So the honor, honor. Buy them right there directly from the uh, honor. Uh, and so while this will go up, this won't even feed into the shield. I, then of course we're going to bring in the Glock, which you know obviously. Of course, we're going to bring in the Glock, but we'd, you know, it just really is a nice shooting gun. Okay. And if I wasn't giving this a thumbs up, you wouldn't be seeing a video right now. You know, they're pretty reasonable. Um, I don't even know what a shield cost. What does a shield cost? Guys, I know that Rubber Dummy is in most of my videos, but he's just that much fun. 